This is William Walker. And William Walker says, hello, gentlemen, from Florida, from the Florida Panhandle. I've heard it said that mathematically we know properties, some or all, I'm not sure, of dimensions higher than what we observe. Could you please elaborate upon this? What can we say about these dimensions? Yeah, how do you get there? Mm -hmm. Great, 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 great. I think this is one of the big misconceptions when mathematicians talk about higher dimensions. People are like assume that they are talking about something that should be physically realized. But so ultimately, when you're doing math, sometimes you might have something that can be described by multiple numbers. You have some system like a, I don't know, a little particle moving around, and you describe its like velocity with some list of numbers and its position with some list of numbers. And you often find it useful to take all your numbers and just list them together. And if you have a list of three numbers, you could think of it as a point in a three-dimensional space. If you have a list of two numbers, you could think of it as a point in a two-dimensional space. Uniquely. But the math, yeah. uniquely, yeah. yeah. And mathematicians and physicists um, realize like, hey, sometimes we're solving a problem and we have a list of like four numbers or five numbers. It, it was really useful to be able to like visualize what was going on when it was a list of three numbers by having this unique association between a triplet of numbers and a point in a 3D space. They're like, why can't we do that? Why can't we say there's some abstract four-dimensional space, not in like physical reality, but that's just going to represent whatever problem I'm solving, where there's a quadruplet of numbers that come up. Or in machine learning these days, right? when a, when a, a large language model reads your text, the first thing it does is it turns a given word into a really big list of numbers, like tens of thousands of numbers. And it's very common for researchers to think of that as a point in an insanely high dimensional space and to use geometric ideas to describe what's happening to it through the model. But of course, we're not saying there's like a 12,000 dimensional space in physical reality. It's just that it's a nice way to describe um, lists of numbers. I have on my shelf here. So these dimensions oh, yeah. are placeholders. What, 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 I got it on my <laughs> shelf here, a Klein bottle, great, bottle opener. Great. I love it. So this is an attempt to represent a four-dimensional object in, in three, three dimensions. dimensions. Yeah. Yeah. So Klein bottles are, are something that um, they're most comfortable in four dimensions. This is where they want to live. And if you try to make them live in three dimensions, they have to like unnaturally cross through themselves. There's no way to put it in three dimensions without it crossing through itself. So the Klein bottle is a bottle that has no inside. Yeah. yeah I, I think that's a fair way to say it. There's no, you can't distinguish the inside and the outside. Yeah. I had uh, I had some friends in college who got in trouble for trespassing in a certain building, and they um, they're like maybe as part of our defense, we go to the fence outside the building and we apply one twist to it so that the whole fence is a Mobius strip, and this is another one of those shapes where there's no clear notion of an inside or an outside. And like then we can argue to the authorities that we couldn't have been inside the trespassing area because there's no coherent notion of the inside of the relevant area. Yeah. Were, were, were these bored Stanford students? <laughs> yeah, these were. Uh, I don't know how bored they were, but they were they were creative Stanford students. <laughs> yeah, not creative enough not to go to jail because <laughs> 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 you're still going down. But that's clever. You have to flip the fence, but then reattach, and reattach it. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So exactly. in the middle of the night, you know, all, while you're doing whatever you're doing, trespassing there, just make sure that as you leave, you like you cut the fence, you twist the fence, you reattach it so that it's a, a Mobius fence and. Then your defense is solid. So a Klein bottle is a four-dimensional version of a Mobius strip. Kind of. Yeah. I, I don't I don't love that description. I mean, it's what if you try to take a Mobius strip and you take another Mobius strip and you try to glue their edges together, you'll get a Klein bottle. It's a very mind warping thing to try to think about. Um, it's analogous to a Mobius strip in that they both are non-orientable, meaning you have this notion of no clear inside or outside. But but they're different. Like a Klein bottle is a closed shape, it doesn't have an edge. Mobius strip has an edge. So like topologically, they're pretty different animals, but they, they like swim in the same waters. Wait, it doesn't have a, a 1D edge, but this has a 2D edge, which we, which would be a surface. A surface is an edge in four dimensions, isn't it? In the same way, the, the 1D edge of a Mobius strip is an edge in three dimensions. So if, if you live on the earth, right, and you try to walk to find the edge of the earth, it's a sphere. There is no edge. You're never going to like go to the edge where all the water is falling off, right? If if the if it was a flat disc, you would you could walk to where the edge is. If you're a little ant and you live on a Mobius strip, you can walk to the edge and like peer off the edge at some point. If you're walking around the Klein bottle, you never hit an edge in that way. It's uh, and like mathematically, we call it a, a closed surface in this way. So they're both surfaces. They're both two D. Okay, so there's an important distinction. Closed surface. That's the key. Time for just one more question. Okay. All right. 
Let's go to our old friend, Kevin the Samoyer. Oh, okay. And Kevin says- That's his last name, the Samoyer. Yeah. Okay. Well, his middle name is the, the, the last name is Samoyer. <laughs> he, he says this, hey, Neil has touched on the three-body problem in an explainer episode, but would there be another branch of mathematics that hasn't been discovered yet that could solve it just like Newton did with motion in honor of Sir Isaac Newton, there is a Spanish wine called Principa Mathematica, which is a bright white wine made with charello. I'm going to find that wine. Yeah. So, so uh, Principia is his greatest work. Uh, it's the Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. Uh-huh. Sensibly abbreviated Principia. Principia. Yeah, but it's Principia Mathematica if you want to give the full thing. Oh, okay. That's his greatest work. If there's a wine with that name, I'm going to find it. it Thank you. A, there is a wine with that S name. Sommelier. So I like this question because at what point do you say it's unsolvable? And at what point do you say the person who's brilliant enough to solve it is yet to be born and to apply their genius to it? Yeah, I would say there's two different ways to think about if a problem's hard to answer. Um, so in the case of Newton modeling the planets, it wasn't even known what the right like math to put to it was, what, what ma mathematical model you would use to try to make predictions. And his big contribution was to invent the appropriate field of math that you could use to then make predictions. A branch of mathematics that you're not inventing today. Just thought I'd rub <laughs> that in again. Okay. Right. Um, and the, I mean, the three-body problem feels so different because it's not that it's like, we don't know what math should describe it. It's instead saying, we know... It's an intrinsically mathematical question. You say, given this piece of math that's describing it exactly, and it's Newtonian calculus, um, it's known that uh, you cannot predict what's going to happen if you have a little bit of error in your initial predictions. So this was the big um, surprise of chaos theory, where initially you might think, hey, if I know how to solve an equation, or if I have some equation, I have a, I'm sufficiently smart about it, then um, if I know the initial state, and I just see how the world evolves according to that equation, I can predict the future. And then chaos theory said there are these situations, including the three-body problem, where even if you exactly know what all the solutions are, if you have a little bit of error in your measurement, that error blows up so quickly that could, subject to that error, the possible states you could end up with after an, like a pretty short amount of time um, span such a wide space of possibilities that effectively the outcome is unpredictable. So unless you had uh, infinite precision, which is just, that's not how science or engineering works at all. Or planets move. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the result is telling, it's not that it's unknown, like what the answers will be. It's known that the answers are unknowable in a certain way, right? It's known that it'll be chaotic in the sense right. that final outcomes are very sensitive. So that's not the type of problem lending itself to this issue. Right. Yeah. Oh, exactly. We just need a smarter person to come along. Right. No, because the idea is this. The answer is it is unknowable. That is, that is the actual oh, solution. Oh, I got you. That's the answer. That's it's not the that we, answer. It's not that we can't solve it's not it. That we, we did can't solve, solve it. We did solve it. <laughs> and, the, right. and, the, exactly. and the solution is Excellent. this is unknowable. You agree with that? That's that's brilliant. Yeah, Here, that's a great summary. I think that's a great summary of chaos. Uh, I've, I've, I've earned my keep here. <laughs> <laughs> I can go home now. Just barely. <laughs> <laughs> I know what time is it. <laughs> really, Chuck, on the last question? <laughs> <laughs>